JRTC students uh, shortly. Uh, this is the beginning of the April Board of Education meeting. This is our reorganizational meeting. Before we adjourn uh, to that reorganization, we have two board members who are leaving, and we want to take a minute to recognize both of them. Um, Kyle Lancaster finishes his eight years. Seven. Seven years on the board, it just feels like 70. Um, and we thank him for his service. And then Carrie Clayton is leaving the board after four years. Both of them decided not to run for re-election, but they served the district during some challenging times, and we will always share COVID. And so I um, <laughs> want to thank both of them for their service. <laughs> what is it? Photo bomb. Photo bomb. Funny news. At our reorganization meeting, um, the, our superintendent gets to take the dais for one short little minute. It's called adjourn sign die. And so this time, the board adjourn sign die and for the election of our board president. Do you want to approve the election results? Do we have to do that first? Yeah, oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> We're not adjourned yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Just kidding. <laughs> and then we can read the certification results. Oh, if you want. <laughs> and then I'll swear. Okay. At this time, we're going to uh, certify our election results. In the most recent uh, election for a school board, our new uh, board members were Drew Legan, who received 1,817 votes, and uh, Jillian Scott, who received 1,209 votes. Proposition Liberator R1. Passed with a 68% majority with 1,573 votes. At this point, we have to take a motion for. Certify the election yeah. results. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to certify the election results. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> and the motion passes. Uh, and so. Dan. I say. Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan. <laughs> Okay, so at this time we're going to welcome our two new board members. They are Drew Legan and Jillian Scott. If you both would come forward.
Jillian, if you want to take the seat that Mike has vacated. Okay, at this time, now we will adjourn signed eye and Dr. Asbill will chair our meeting. It's only symbolic, but I get, I, I I get to hold to. it for one time. Right, yeah. 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 Here you go. <laughs> go for so it. as the old board <laughs> adjourns, and we would like to welcome uh, Drew and Jillian to board service. Uh, happy to have you here, and happy to have you serving parents and students of the Bolivar School District. So we uh, appreciate your service. Uh, sometimes board service is one of those opportunities that it's thankless, but at the same time you're doing a, a lot of good work, and we appreciate that dedication. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion for the Office of President for the Bolivar Board of Education. Dr. Asbill, I nominate Ron Owens. Okay. I'll second that. And second by Dan. Are there any other nominations for the Office of President? See none. We'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor of Ron Owens as president of the Bolivar Board of Education, say aye. 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 And motion passes. Mr. Owens, congratulations. congratulations. There you go. All right, Ron, this is the official gavel pass. We'll let Ron get kind of settled in here, and uh, we'll get, get the agenda rolling. It is time to have nominations to elect our vice president for the Board of Education. Do we have any nominations? I nominate Dan Goodman. We have a nomination second. for Dan Goodman, by Drew Lincoln, and a second. Do we have any other nominations? <laughs> Okay. All in favor of Dan Goodman for vice president, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we have Dan as our vice president. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. We now need a motion for a treasurer. Do we have a nomination for treasurer? I nominate Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan. Do we have any other nominations? I'll second that. Thank you. We have a second and no others. All in favor of Mike Ryan for treasurer, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Congratulations. Congratulations, Mike Ryan. Very good. Okay. At this time, we are to appoint a board secretary, and we are very fortunate to have Sheila Anderson as the individual I would like to appoint. Do we all agree to appoint Sheila? I second. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. She did. <laughs> she did. Thank you. Thank you for serving. We, we all appreciate you very, very much. It's time to move to commendations, and Mike Ryan has a list. It is not the lengthy list that we have had in the past. Mike does a great job of that. Mike, if you, if you would do that, we would be sure, appreciative. absolutely. Some commendations we have um, over at BHS, the following FCCLA girls went to state competition this week. They all received gold. Congratulations. Um, they do... Uh, they do they do score a little odd, so here is their scoring within gold. If you see them, be sure to congratulate them. Ashlyn Calgan, second place, and say yes to FCS. Can go to Nationals, congratulations. Uh, Saya Badu and Delaney Vogt, third place in public uh, policy advocacy. Kylie St St uh, Stafford, third place in job interview. The Missouri JAG State, project-based learning and showcase competition, first place. Alicia Allison, Jordan Burke. Braden Sumter, business competition, third place, Lashayla Moore, Michael Potterman, Layla Souls, Braden Sumter. All six Bolivar kids will advance it to nationals in April. Congratulations, Missouri Jack. This past weekend, we finished our national qualifying for NSDA nationals in Des Moines, Iowa, and we ended up with the following eight students heading to nationals. If you see them, please congratulate them on their success. Mason Stanley. Sam Dickerson, Jacob Morgan, Sasha Williams, Delaney Vogt, uh, Michaela Bernard, Amy McHugh-Hoag, and Chloe Way. Congratulations to all of our accommodations, and we're excel excited to celebrate all of our students. Um. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. <coughs> Next, we have our consent agenda. This is our minutes, bills, resignations. Uh, these are things that have been presented to the board previously. We've had time to look these over and we can take care of a lot of business with one motion here. So we have, uh, we would like a motion to approve the consent 
agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mike Ryan, second by Paula Hubbard. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? And consent agenda is passed. Okay, uh, moving on to employment. Dr. Asbel, we need to look at certified. Mm -hmm. We have uh, <coughs> recommendations for certified positions in various buildings. Those are before you, uh, and we would recommend employment. Do we have a motion to or to uh, offer employment to the certified staff that are presented before you? So moved. Second. Motion made by Dan Goodman, second by Paula Hubbard. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the motion passes. Do we have classified staff to We employ? do have uh, one classified recommendation okay. for food service that we would recommend. Okay. We need a motion to uh, approve employment at classified. We have a motion made by Mike Ryan. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dan Goodman. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Do we have any extra duty to look at? No, um, we do have uh, the extra duty uh, review uh, process occurring, uh, but we have no extra duty recommendations for okay, you tonight. Okay, no extra duty. Let's move to substitutes. We do have three new substitutes to approve tonight. If you could please uh, consider a recommendation to approve substitutes. Okay, we need a motion to approve substitutes. So moved. Mr. Womack, and do we have a second? Second. Second by Mike Ryan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Come forward and see. Good evening, folks. Good evening. I'm Senior Master Sergeant Cadet Nix, and I'll let you know how Cadet Master Sergeant Jason. Uh, yeah, this evening we're just going to give you a squadron briefing, going over what we've done this year, uh, what we do in the squadron in general, and um, yeah. So it's going to start. Cadet Nix, if you could, I apologize, uh, we have a microphone on the other side of the podium and that might help a little bit with both the, um, our audience that's um, presenting uh, or watching online and then anybody in here. So thank Sounds you good. so much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, so we'll get started here. Today, what we will be going over in the brief is uh, the impact goals, the wellness program, the community service that we've uh, performed field trips, activities, recruiting and retention, and probation. Yeah, so like Cadet Jensen said, um, with all of these, basically we set, in the goal section, we set goals for ourselves in the beginning of the year as a squadron um, on what we're going to accomplish in the year further. Our wellness program is going over what we uh, do as far as PT goes, physical fitness tests, because we do get a PE credit with JROTC. Um, and community service is just what we do out in the community of Bolivar, uh, volunteering for things such as color guards, um, going and doing different things you'll see in the another slide, uh, JRTC travel, our, our field trips, stuff that we do for drill, marksmanship, and uh, other things like that. Uh, LDRs, our leadership development requirements, are just extracurriculars that are involved with JRTC. Um, such as drill, marksmanship, UAV, and um, other things like that. Recruiting and retention, we uh, come up to BMS and do recruiting here, and we also make efforts uh, down at the high school, um, creating posters and other things like that to try to get cadets interested, or you know, other people interested in joining as a cadet. And uh, yeah, probation will be discussed at the end. So. One of the impact goals we set for ourselves as a squadron in the beginning of the year was um, to increase our personal fitness test score by 5% um, by April 10th, and that was completed. All of our cadets, on average, scored 5% higher on their tests. Um, these tests are taken quarterly, um, so each quarter we take a different physical test, and uh, yeah, on average, we all scored about 5%. 
So that was great. Another impact goal that we try and increase over the year, uh, we've implemented uh, a new thing into our JRTC squadron. Uh, it's a promotion. Um, we try and implement and increase our promotion rate to um, 50 percent. Uh, we're still working on it currently, and um, hopefully in the future we can give more cadets more leadership roles. So along with our cadet impact goals that we set for ourselves in the beginning of the year, we also have school impact goals, things that we're going to do to impact the school. So uh, we had a goal to recruit at BMS by the date May 1st, and we did that get completed. Uh, all of the kids seemed to have a great time. Uh, we set up different info tables and uh, different activities for them to do and learn more about JRTC, and they all seemed to like it a lot and have a good time, so it was good. Uh, some of the things that we do for community service is we conduct color gardens, like we discussed earlier. Um, <clears throat> we march in parades. Uh, we do Veteran Day activities and um, share your Christmas. We also do community service at other places like Springfield. And we do car parking, assist with that, and uh, much more. Yeah, so all of these community service events that we do, um, we log into a database we have in our squadron, it's called WINGS, um, and that all, all our community hours that we get throughout our JRTC career will be logged into that, and if we decide to pursue a uh, military career in the future, they can look back on that, and we can also uh, give that to other companies or businesses so they can see you know, what all we've done in our community. So last year, Command Flight, we set a goal to achieve at least 20 color guards, and this year we've this year and we're pretty proud of our squadron. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so our wellness program like we talked about in the overview uh, is we do at the end of the week every week we do our own little uh, PE type of deal where we do different things uh, like push-ups, sit-ups, running and uh, group activity games so you know ultimate football things like that all involve good activity so everyone enjoys it. We also allow cadets to have more experience and learn and educational, but also have fun with it. We usually like to take them to uh, air shows, as the one you can see. We got to see a World War II bomber. Um, my personal favorite was when we went up to the World War I Museum. We got to see an original, real World War I tank. Um, it allows them to learn history about the Air Force and other military uh, corporations. Yeah. Uh, our extracurricular activities, um, they're also we call them LDRs because it's shorter. We have um, lots of lots of options here. Our personal squadron favorite, and it's been our favorite for quite some time, is our drill team, which is um, basically traveling up to different places, and we you know practice at school almost every morning prior to the drill season. Um, but just practicing marching movements, maneuvers, facing movements, maneuvers, as well as um, practicing our color guard and then going out and competing against other schools, drill teams, and doing uh, drill and ceremony. Um, yeah, we have a color guard team, marksmanship team, we're, and we're kicking off a lot of other uh, LDRs next year. We're going to get uh, more serious with our UAV club, um, rocket club, and Raiders team. So you can see on the slide how many cadets participated in each of those LDRs this year. Each summer, or each semester, my bad, uh, we usually try and come over to the middle school and talk to the eighth graders that are incoming to freshmen. We explain to them uh, the activities and benefits that we have for JRTC. And, um, we also explain to them what we can do and help them in the future by giving them leadership skills and more availability to achieve a job mm -hmm. in the future. 
So at this time, we're going to talk about the probation our squadron is currently on uh, due to enrollment issues as well as only having one instructor. So we are currently low in numbers. We're sitting at around 36 to 38 cadets, and uh, we need to be successful. We need around 10% of the school's uh, population. population number, yeah. So we should have about around 80, but we're sitting around 38. And we do have more incoming uh, cadets that are 8th graders right now going to be freshmen coming in. So that's good. But at this time, I'd like to invite Senior Master Sergeant Bender up to talk about the probation we're currently on. So what I'd like to first start out with is these uh, youngsters are part of my command flight. So they help manage and lead the squadron. They say that in junior ROTC, it's a cadet-led, cadet-run program. The instructors are just around so we can satisfy the school's obligation to have adults in the room, I guess. So they do most of the work. We just uh, help mentor and coach them along. So these guys are doing an awesome job. They'll both be back next year. And Cadet Jensen has joined the Army National Guard, so he'll be going off to training this uh, summer. So that's pretty cool. We have a few other cadets in, in our history that have went off to join the military. And we have uh, helped a lot of cadets get out there and get good civilian jobs by the training that we offer in the program. So that kind of leads me to the, the probation part of it. And I'm asking your help on this a little bit. We, one of the things that we face with enrolling new members is a misunderstanding that we're a military pipeline. That we're going to get these youngsters in, we're going to train them. Um, somewhere along the way, I'm going to call for a bus. There's going to be a, <laughs> a green bus outside. I'm going to say forward march. They're going to end up on a bus and off to training. We're not a military recruitment program. They get to join our program, and there's no military commitment whatsoever. They, I would say 70% of our youngsters don't join the military. But if they do, Cadet Nick's mentioned, they can go in at a higher pay grade if they do, and they're just a little bit further along the way than people that haven't had the experience in our program. The um, other side of the probation part is uh, Cadet Nick's mentioned that we're low on our numbers, so we are coming up with better ways to get the message out. We do come over to the middle school, and I've been getting some feedback that our, our um, repetitive thing that we do with bringing some exercise items over and we have some exercise fun and everything, the eighth graders are thinking we're like an extreme fitness program. And all we're meant to do is to work them out hard and they fall down and chip their teeth and stuff like that. So we're getting a bad, a bad rap with what we've been doing. So I'm, uh, this year we tried to bring the middle grade, or the eighth graders over to the high school so we could give them an orientation over there of the facilities that they would experience and we would be able to show them more of what they will experience in the program. Like we could have our marksmanship range up and running, we could do more things there. So we're going we're working on our numbers. Uh, we're working on our numbers. The Air Force won't shut us down uh, instantly if we don't make those numbers. They'll just keep us on probation for a while. So we have a, a get well plan in place, and we will keep working hard on that to get our numbers up there. The other side of their of the probation, and this came out of a unit evaluation we had from big headquarters in uh, February. And uh, we've been down one instructor ever since Major Robinson retired at the end of the 23 school year, 2023. And it's not the school fault that we don't have another instructor. You know, it's, a, it's kind of an awkward process to get through all the, all the um, wickets to get hired into a position like this. But I will tell you that the, the uh, um, eligibility requirements have been broadened. It used to be just available for Air Force retirees that could apply for these kind of awesome jobs. But realizing that it's hard to fill all these instructor positions around the world, because it's not just in the United States that we have these, these schools. 
that's in Guam, uh, Japan, Korea, anywhere there's an American high school, there's a there could be a junior ROTC program. So that being said, the the uh, headquarters has realized we can't get enough instructors just by getting retirees. So they've opened it up to the Air National Guard and the uh, um, Air Force Reserve. As long as they have served 10 years or more and are still serving and have good status, they can apply to become a JROTC instructor. And someone who's separated from active duty Air Force and maybe not retired, but they still have that 10 year or so experience, they could also be eligible to apply for an instructor position. So that opens up the pool pretty, pretty well. Uh, we just got to get the message out. And I've been working with Whiteman Air Force Base with their public affairs, and they're aware of it now, and now I'm going to be able to get up there and get into their staff meetings and verbally explain the program. So I'll be making some trips up there uh, over the summer. So I think that's all I wanted to touch up on there. And um, archery, we're bringing archery next year. We're going to try to appeal to more youngsters. We're going to have robotics. So uh, we're broadening what we used to always do. So we're going to have uh, a little more things for our youngsters to do. And uh, are there any questions from the board? Is there a cost for the students to join or for like the uniforms? Is that a, something that's a that, that's an awesome That's an awesome question. There's no cost. So what happens is the, uh, the Air Force provides the uniforms. We, we are set up like an Air Force squadron at the high school, which should definitely be more than 38 people. But we, we operate as a squadron as much as we can during, during the school year. So they all have different positions and different um, responsibilities. We have someone that we call our logistics officer who's responsible for our uniform ish, uh, inventory. So we get uniforms from the Air Force and then we issue them to the new cadets or to all of our cadets free of charge. The only thing we ask them is that they wash them and stuff like that. And then when they leave the program, they just turn them back in. There's really no cost for the, the cadets to be in our program. If we go on a field trip, the field trip itself is paid for. The lunch, the dinner, whatever is paid for. You know, if we stop at, get, at a gas station and they want to go get their own candy bar, then they would need a couple bucks. But other than that, there's no cost for the cadets to be in our program. Is there anything that you're lacking in the program that you need that we can help you with? That's a pretty big talk show right there, sir. Uh, <laughs> Hey, we do we, what we can. <laughs> we, uh, we have a, a good supply of a lot of things. I have big ideas, but I don't know how well they would fly. Um, and fly is kind of the funny word I said. I said Air that Force. by accident. Air Force. Yes. You know. It would really be cool if we had a bigger realistic simulator. But they're, they're like $5,000 for the entry model. And I'm not here asking for, for money. I'm just saying. Um, and they look... You know, they, they almost look like a cockpit of an airplane. And then they have like the windshield thing up here. And then they sit in the chair, you know, like a real pilot seat. And it's more realistic of uh, what a flight would be. And I think uh, Mr. Braden's going to show us a video of our cadets out flying this weekend with the Civil Air Patrol. Um, because the, the Kids like to play with, not play, but experience visual things and active things. And I have a couple of simulators right now, and the schools hooked me up with some pretty good computers that they had, and mm -hmm. it works well. It, we, it, but the, the simulators that are made for that purpose are just a little bit more, more um, explosive or just a little bit more. Uh, Mm -hmm. Realistic. Realistic, yeah. yeah. But we're, we have a lot of good things. You know, we, we got a marksmanship range up uh, in the atrium area up above the gym um, in, in that second floor area. And that's also where we'll do our archery shooting. Um, we got a good classroom to work in. 
We have plenty of storage facilities, so we're taken care of you know, pretty, pretty well over at the school. But there's always things that we're trying to get and improve on to get more attractive for uh, the youngsters. Because the generations change, you know, throughout the years, and what was really working well five years ago doesn't seem to be working at the moment. So I'm trying to be more creative of what I can find to make work. You said you had a video? Yes. So is that right? Or that next reader will send it to me. Yeah, I did send it. Okay. Okay. We'll get that pulled up. Any other questions? I'd just like to say, Cadet Jensen and Nick, thank you for being here. Uh, public speaking is not easy, and both of you did a great job this evening. So thank you for being here, and thank you for speaking. And well, you're both you very right. talented young men. Did you have a question? And thank you for letting us come and, and uh, spend this evening with you. So this is a quick bid. Uh, quite often, or once a year, we go fly. <laughs> Civil Air Patrol at least once a year, and uh, the pilots take our youngsters up in, into an orientation flight. So once the airplane gets up to a safe altitude, they let our cadets hold the controls and actually fly, fly the airplane for several minutes, you know, uh, basically straight level. But I guess they, they flew out to St Stockton Lake on Saturday, and they got to make some turns and stuff around Stockton Lake, so they, they had a good time. Thank you for being here, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Thank you. Great program. Okay. Time to move to administrative reports, and we'll start with high school. Um, they got my board report. Not a lot on there after I got through all the what has happened, what will happen. I don't think I have anything additional to report, but if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take those. Okay, thank you. So thank you, Mr. Blair. You, you took care of the pizza and ice cream for the students, you <laughs> promised. I took care of it for the one student that asked for it. <laughs> this okay. one, I can't, I can't, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> so 50%. Okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Ryan, for keeping up on that. Mr. Potter, how about some middle school information? <clears throat> I, uh, I'm in the same boat as Mr. Blair. I don't have anything extra to say in my report. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions? We're good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. To Mr. Love, if you don't have anything, you don't have to walk up. I have a 10-minute speech, but I'll cut it short. There are questions. Are there any questions to have Mr. Love come up for? Okay. Dr. Tennyson, do you have anything to add other than what was in your report? Any questions, any questions for Dr. Tennyson? Okay. Ms. Cooper? Do you guys have any questions for me? We've had a great start to April. Great to hear. No questions. Okay. Mr. Hines? He's following suit. Like, he, 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 <laughs> if he didn't, pressure, get, if he didn't get it by now. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, Tim Pizzetti, athletics and activities. Uh, it's okay. Come on, Dan. It's okay. <laughs> I'll make it quick. I just want to say thank you to the Booster Club for grilling at our golf tournament and yesterday at our tennis tournament. And Drew was there yesterday grilling as well. Yes, he was. Thank you. Mike Pitts. I have three quick updates. The first is about doors. We've had a lot go on with our doors. We had a lightning strike that struck three areas of the middle school. Uh, we've just, uh, just today had the last repair at the middle school. So all of the lightning related issues are cleared up and the doors are functional. Also with doors, we, over spring break, had eight new doors installed. 
I'm sure the uh, superintendent will maybe report on that in his facilities report, but all of those doors are nice, they're functioning, and they are online, the ones that had readers. And we now have a pipeline of seven candidates that um, uh, we're going to look at uh, putting readers on. We have prioritized those, and so this summer, if they fit into a grant, which we think they will, we'll put in eight new readers on existing doors. The second update I have is about photography services. We have uh, launched a bid process, a proposal process for next year. Uh, I have sent our bid sheet to each person who has expressed interest in the last 16 months. We have a committee of seven members of our district and six parents. The committee is complete and we are accepting proposals uh, until the end of the month. And um, there's, there's that. The final uh, update I have is about our music insurance. I spoke with the executive director of music last night and we have met all seven benchmarks that helps with our cyber insurance deductible. Uh, the last two that we had are how we handle uh, backups and also endpoint detection and response. We've cleared the hurdles and he, I have it writing from him that should we have a claim, if we were to have a claim, our deductible would be 10000 instead of 50000 That concludes my report. I'm happy to take your questions. Any questions? For our new board members, when you hear us talk about music and insurance together, music is an acronym for Missouri United, United School, School Insurance, Insurance Consortium. So welcome to board service. You will be <laughs> death by acronyms. Yes, they will be uh, inundated right. for sure. You will I, have I lots still of don't acronyms. know them all. But if you if we ever throw one of those out administratively or whatever, just feel free because we yeah stop us. A lot of times we get that that's the just how we get them all the time. We just need to help you with those. So yeah, that's thank you, Mr. Pitts. Does Bradenburg Mr. have? Can I, oh, I've got yes, a quick yes, um, Mike, just just to make sure I heard you correctly, the deadline for photo app, uh, candidates and bids is the end of this month. Yes, if we uh, we have had a few people, Paula, express interest, uh -huh. but we need something some in something more formal yeah. from interested candidates by yeah. Tuesday, April 30th. Tuesday, April 30th. Yes. All materials must be presented yes, to you. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you for okay. highlighting that. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Um, Braden? Yes. I have yeah. two quick things. There he is. With it being the third year of Beef Days, they'll be returning to Grill Burgers for our students this year. So if you guys are around, it's May 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's a Monday through Thursday. And it goes BPS, BIS, BMS, BHS. So um, that'll be a fun time. I know our students really enjoy that. And then second thing, I know it feels like a long time ago. I was able to go to the, on the senior trip this year as a chaperone, and I just wanted to share how awesome our students were on that trip. It went off flawlessly. They're goofy teenagers. They were a lot of fun and having a good time, but when it came to the memorials and the monuments, they buckled down. They were mature and very respectful, and so I was very, uh, very appreciative of that and really impressed with our students. And so I just wanted to share that information with you. So. Thank you, Brady. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Wall. I do have a few updates. Okay. Sorry, gang. It won't take me very long. Um, testing is underway. We're already testing small groups for special ed. Um, it looks like our testing schedule at um, BIS will start on April 22nd, BMS May 6th, and at the high school April 29th. So we're here. We are piloting two resources for literacy adoption next year. Um, we will be finished with that pilot by the end of the year. We're looking at Wonders and Benchmark. Both of those pilot, pilot textbook series are um, approved by DESE. They're on the DESE list where, where they've kind of selected resources that meet the criteria that they're wanting to see in literacy and they're excellent both of them are excellent so we will be bringing one of those to you later on in may probably may um, letters is wrapping up we've had our first cohort go through 42 teachers have gone through as well as dr tennyson and myself it's been great training we have 20 addi 21 additional teachers that will be going through next year and that should saturate our district so Every K-5 teacher of literacy and every K-8 special education teacher will have had that training, and it's, it's exceptional. So we're looking forward to finishing that up. 
And then summer school transportation, just to, just letting you know, we are doing um, routes this year instead of door to door in the city to be efficient and to keep students super safe. We wanna offer summer school for every child in the district. So we'd work with Russ and Bonzel McDaniel. They've done a great job. But I wanted to let you know that that about that, um, we are doing some safe routes in town. Um, out of town will be door to door, like it always has been. That's all I have. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Dr. Wall? Thank you. Okay. Dr. Asbill. Nothing to add at this time. Okay. I'll cover some other things in a minute. Okay. In regard to board governance, we had uh, several of our board members and others um, take a little trip up to Jeff City. Ms. Hubbard yes. and Mr. Ryan, Drew Legan, Dr. Wall, and Sheila Anderson mm -hmm. went. And we'd love for some of you, one or more of you, to share about your experience up there. Um, tell us about how that went and anything you'd like to share. Go for it, Paula. We, um, the board went and met with our state representative, uh, Representative Stevens. We had a wonderful visit with Senator Crawford. She's always so receptive and so supportive of, of education. We also had a phenomenal visit with Governor Parson. And we're so fortunate to have, uh, to of course have him from our community. And we're always so welcoming to us. We heard some wonderful updates about um, legislation and we were able to do some, I think some pretty significant lobbying. And it, it's always great to see education from a broader perspective and not just from your district. I think we can all agree that we're blessed to be here at Bolivar and, mm -hmm. and live here. And Missouri is a diverse state and um, we're just happy to be here and we support those who represent us in Jeff City and advocate for us and um, we are to be reminded that we have to continually advocate for public education uh, because it is such a value to our community and to each individual person and student that we serve so thank you all for taking that trip very much appreciated okay moving on to strategic planning uh, financial planning Ms. Chelsea. <clears throat> Just a quick update update for you guys. Um, open enrollment did for insurance began yesterday. That's been going over fairly well. Um, also, Dr. Asbill and I uh, met with Stiefel and the Bond Council regarding how to proceed with the funding of bonds at, um, in the next few months. And we are preparing for our upcoming rating call next week. Um, we've also met with MoCAT um, regarding how um, we'll have to set up a spending plan and how we will um, have the optimal investment opportun opportunities. Um, and then also um, this evening I will be presenting to you an RFP for um, depository services for bank bids. And so that will go out um, if it, for approved um, on Thursday. Do you have any questions for me? You do have a fund four summary. Yes. That is their capital project summary. It's just a kind of an ongoing guide. Uh, just want to explain to the board that we will have some train uh, HVAC expenditures. We did enter into that agreement we, to get ahead of the schedule. So those uh, payments um, to start the, the process of that work as well as the purchase of equipment, those will start this month and next month. Um, those will come in before bond proceeds are received, so we'll pay those out of Fund 4, and then at such time the bond proceeds are received, then we'll reimburse Fund 4 from the bond proceeds. But you will see that uh, balance drop um, significantly over the next couple of months as we make those prepayments to the train project. That's a $3 million project. Is that the ground source heat going to be replaced at the high school? I thought that was... Yeah, so the these are mostly unit updates, so they're ground source units that are being replaced. It's not expanding the ground source system like drilling wells or anything like that. This is purely the, uh, the units themselves. Um, it does uh, have some piping in, in involved in that, some efficiencies, and then some control systems. So they utilize the ground source that's there to just kind of update it. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's at the high school, 
um, and then the primary, the kindergarten wing. Then at the middle school, it's almost reverse. We're taking some, we're replacing some units, but we're taking them off of the ground source system. Um, if you recall, one of the, the challenges that we have on this campus, the middle school campus, is we've had uh, a classroom or a building project expansion, but we never went and expanded the ground source field. And so we have increase the draw on the field without increasing its capacity. So we plan to take off the middle school gym off of the existing ground source, which should, um, the total square footage should allow some efficiencies to um, extend the life of our existing ground source system. But it does mean moving some systems to stand alone uh, rather than being on the ground source. We, we had planned that a little bit when we knew that the FEMA building would go in. And so we were trying to coordinate that space in between the, the uh, existing middle school gym and the, and the FEMA building so that we would have some decking options if we needed to relocate some, some uh, HVAC equipment. Any other questions for Chelsea? Thank you, Chelsea. Dr. Asbell, do you have additional facilities and operations updates? Yes, uh, Mike did mention, and we're really excited. So the exterior door replacement, we are, we are really down to just only a couple door areas that um, on our exterior doors. Uh, for instance, the uh, glass, solid glass doors over by TK, those were replaced. We now have those. Uh, they're much more secure. We also went with these, this uh, round of door replacements. Instead of doing side lights, we did the VRP panels where, where windows would be, which reduces the amount of breakable space that we have uh, to gain access to the buildings. And it's also a nice look. Um, it, it is different. It does change some of the lighting. So what we're going to do at like TK is we'll probably put in another fluorescent light or LED light just inside the door because it does it does change the, 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 the light that comes into some of the buildings. So, but we are happy about that. That, is a, um, that was one of our final big pushes of our safety and security efforts was uh, those exterior door replacements. Um, we, do, we had an interesting uh, issue occur on this campus. We had a water line break, and it's uh, been a fairly significant issue. We've had to turn the, the uh, water off to the middle school a couple times. A three inch line and um, they um, choked that down with a T to a three quarter inch line and what happened was the valve at the top of the three quarter broke off um, and you can only imagine the amount of pressure and so <laughs> it's taken us a while to get that and that was some old construction so we've got that repaired but really appreciate our maintenance crew and uh, their response but that was quite uh, a sight to see uh, the water shooting up about tree height uh, on that one. We do have some surplus property efforts that we'll be working on. Uh, we do have some older vehicles. Uh, we have an old um, Econoline van. Uh, we have two old maintenance trucks that we will probably look at surplusing. And what that means is that we will consider it surplus property. It allows us to take uh, proposals on uh, sell selling that and then that money will be receded back to the district. We would usually would like to use that in the maintenance department for new tools or, or any type of um, equipment purchases so that we reinvest into that department. So um, we'll probably see some discussion here before too long on some surplus property. There'll probably be at least three vehicles that will take off of our fleet. And any questions that you have about other facility items? We are gearing up for summer school, but we are also, that means that we start to gear up for summer projects. Correct. So we will start identifying some of those specific projects. We are going to talk with our maintenance staff about keying in, keying in on some specific projects and not trying to um, get too aggressive with projects because we will be entering into the bond projects. So we don't want to do something that ends up getting impacted by future construction. So we'll, we'll try to make sure we have a, a plan for some of those uh, impacts. Very good. Okay, how about an update on Liberators R1? Yes, so we are extremely excited. We appreciate uh, the certification of election results. What a great turnout mm -hmm. for Liberators R1 in the Bolivar School District. We're so excited about that. Um, I, I really want to appreciate our 
our parents, our students, our staff who just did a great effort of just getting the word out. We have identified priorities that really touched just about everything that we were doing in many buildings. So we're excited about the fact that this has a, a huge impact to our district. I'd like to break down this report into two. When we're successful, we get to kind of celebrate that for about 15 minutes, and then we have a lot of work to get done. <laughs> so let us talk about uh, uh, the first part, which is the bonds. So um, Chelsea mentioned what we will do now is engage bond council. We go through a ratings call. So S&P will rate the district in regard to our financial condition. Some of the things that we have done over the last three years um, will be uh, viewed in regard to our refinancing of existing debt or paying off old debt. Uh, puts us in a view that should be favorable to the bond council. So they will look at that. And then what that rating does is establishes the type of interest rate we would be paying. So the better rating we get, the better interest rate, um, the better investment options we get from people who look at those bonds that are interested in investing in those. We will offer those bonds up for sale um, after the ratings call. We will have that on the May board agenda for that resolution. And then those bonds would be made available uh, for uh, local investors as well as state or national investors that, when they go to market. The bond proceeds will then be distributed back to the district. Uh, we will look at interest rates uh, in regard to how and when we sell those um, and try to be as strategic as we can. We do anticipate bond proceeds being in by the, the first part of June. Once we get those, we, we deposit those in what's called Fund 4. But those are identified, so you have your Fund 4 report. So let's say that there's, you know, $100 in Fund 4. Um, these are kept separate in Fund 4. So they will always be separate for the life of, of until we expend all of those dollars. So um, we, we keep and track those separately. Um, Chelsea did also mention that we did uh, a year ago enter into a partnership with MoCAT. Uh, MoCAT um, is a fund available to school districts, political subdivisions that allows us to invest those bond proceeds to maximize the total amount of interest and investment that can occur. What will occur for us is we will have draws on those bond funds that will be very random. So for, for a while we may not have very many draws at all on those funds, so we want them getting the maximum exposure on the bond market and interest rate. And then we may uh, then have a schedule that says it's a gradual drawdown for 12. Um, and then that allows us to uh, maximize bond funds. Any questions on the bond uh, so, process? So that money will be sitting in the, like a money market account while, while we're drawing on it? That is correct. It's not really a money market, but it is. But that would that would be a great analogy. What we do is we put that in. They will invest that in different groups, and they will help us develop a draw schedule, so that they'll know that okay, we've started the HVAC, and we will need X amount of funds in by September, and then the rest of those will be invested in a heavier type portfolio that allows us to maximize the interest rate until we have the next project start. And then, for example, another reference, we'll use Fund 4 to prepay on some of that and then reimburse the district. We would do that, so let's say that we ended up having, and I know that this is a, a large amount, let's say we had a $50,000 bill. And I know that's a lot of money, but in comparison to $11 million, it's, it's not. We would pay that out of Fund 4 and then have that 50000 reimbursed to the district at a competitive time that we've maximized the interest rate or the draw schedule. So that'll be the, the key there. Now, it's also important to note that Chelsea and I are not investors. We, we, we are not certified to do that. So that's why we use, as a political, these are taxpayer dollars, so we use a program like MoCAT to be able to appropriately invest those. These are not out and going out in the stock market. That's not what we're doing. So. And aren't there really a limited number of options for yes. investing? Yeah, I was going to say, municipal I mean, could funds? you use a local bank that's... Mm -hmm. No, 
they're doing five what, and a half, six percent on a money market. No, that actually that is correct. You could do that, but the challenge is is that we would not we would lose the ability to have the draw schedule and someone that would help us uh, coordinate that with our our bond schedule. And so what you could have. I'm, I'm going to just throw out some numbers, and I don't mean these to be, like, mathematically correct. You could have an interest rate of, let's say, 5.1, and you think, oh, that's really good because this other one is, is 4.9. But the issue is is that because of the draw schedule, they're maximizing the total amount instead of saying, hey, we're, we're chunking out bits and pieces of that as we're drawing on that. to re re So in the end... We want to maximize the amount of bond proceeds and the interest rate that it can bring back to the projects. And MOCAT and these other type investment groups that help political subdivisions do that in a secure manner, but also they're able to maximize that because they know school business in regard to how we're going to take those funds. Sounds like a very specialized yes. um, yep. profession that they engage in that. Okay. The second part of that is then let's talk about the work that's occurring, which is really the design and the architectural work. So Dr. Methvin and I will meet with Paragon next week. Uh, Paragon, as uh, we've been engaged with them now for a couple, well, several months, but we've been really working actively on the project. So we'll be a different uh, uh, phase-in options of, of the projects. So we'll, in May and June, we'll be doing schematic design, which is basically the overview of each of the projects and what size and where those would be. They'll start working with engineers. They'll do uh, on-site topographical uh, elevations, making sure that we kind of know those type of things. They may even do site borings, looking for unsuitable soils, those type of things. We'll get a lot of that stuff going fairly soon. Uh, July and August is really what's called the design phase, which is really putting things in an architectural way, the plans, so that we can go to the next part, which is the construction documents. Once construction documents are finished, probably around in September or October, we'll be ready to go to bid right now. Um, and Dr. Methvin will work on this uh, as we transition. Um, our goal for he and I is that we're, we're bidding around that November time frame and trying to hopefully get some construction started by the 1st of, of 2025. Um, we won't know until the bids come in, uh, but there's uh, a, the, the strategy for us is looking at it and saying, okay, should we focus on the high school ag building first? If we're able to, to facilitate that, if that works with all of the other things going on, you move ag, which allows you to move auto tech, which allows you to do certain other things. So. There's kind of a trickle. Now, a construction company is going to come in, and they're not just going to work one place. They're going to, they're going to do the earthwork, and then they're going to move to earthwork to do the next part. So but that will be kind of the plan is looking at how we can phase these in, minimize the interruption, but there is going to be some interruptions, but we're going to try to look at how we can phase those in in, a, in an appropriate way. Um, the next part is that while we have some of those projects that will be architect-led, there will be several other components that will be district-led. So, for instance, the playgrounds. What we'll do is we'll engage in proposal reviews with playground engineers uh, to, to do that work. Uh, we can also even subcontract that with potentially one of our uh, general contractors. So we'll look at what that looks like and how the district can maximize those dollars, and, and then we'll do, try to do those uh, um, as best as schedule. You, you'd love to be able to do a playground this summer, but it's, we're not there yet. So that would be one that you go, oh, why aren't we doing playgrounds in January? Well, because you don't want to lose your playgrounds for the spring. So that would be one that you would say, hey, we'll start playground work in May, June, and July for the goal of being ready to go by the next August. So there will be some of those type of things that we just ask you to kind of engage uh, Dr. Meffin and I in questions. Uh, we, we, are, we are going to be conservative and not try to overcommit. There's a lot of things that happen. Winter rain there's a lot of things so um, we just want to phase those in and take a very aggressive approach but we have to be mindful that it's a construction project and things can happen so we'll work through that those are the two liberator uh, r1 we're very excited about that and we should have the bond resolution for you at the may board meeting and bond council will be here uh, to present to you at that time okay thank you dr asbill Okay, the Board of Education has received electronically um, building level handbook 
updates that each of the building administrators have forwarded to us. So uh, we have a 30-day review on that. So when you have your opportunity, uh, take a look at those. Uh, if you have any questions about something, reach out to the building administrator. Like if it was a high school question, reach out to Mr. Blair and so on for the, each building to discuss any questions you have about that. Um, that would be uh, our best step. But we want to next month be able to um, approve uh, those building uh, level handbooks. Any questions from the board about that? Okay. Next, uh, MSBA policy EHBD, and this involves artificial intelligence. And obviously, this is something that is very quickly at turbo speed um, upon us, and it will impact all of us and all parts of our lives, and we can't ignore that. Um, in November, at the MSBA conference, we had a speaker that spoke about artificial intelligence, and she was very knowledgeable. And one of the best things that she talked about was schools getting ahead of this as much as we possibly can. So uh, MSBA is leading the way and uh, to get us policy that will help us as a school district navigate through the challenges that will be presented. We will have challenges. It will happen. We want to be setting our foundation early mm -hmm. and have the tools for our administrators to be able to respond to those challenges. So anyhow, if you will review policy EHBD, and if you have any questions about that, um, Mr. Pitts can be a point of contact uh, for that. And if you have any other specifics, just reach out and we will... Um, put our heads together and make sure that we're, we're putting the best policies in place to uh, enable our school district to address artificial intelligence as best we can. And we have a tech committee. We have the administrators. This will be one that you, you won't necessarily be able to do it in 30 days. So what we'll do is we're going to bring you some back some reports in May and June in regard to what we, we see is occurring. Now, the policy itself is just one component, but the administrative team is working on what would we would do, what that would look like, and the models that we would do. We, we, are, we have sent out some model policy from a couple of the school districts, and uh, that committee will start working on uh, the best way because it's, you have to be proactive, but you also, there's a defensive piece that you have to be, but you can't just say that it's not gonna happen. I mean, we, so we need to be prepared in how to support teachers, how to support students, so we've got that group that will be working alongside you as you start reviewing the policy. Thank you. Moving on to action items. Uh, our next step is to appoint a representative to Bolivar Education Advancement Foundation, frequently known as the Beef Board. And we would like to ask Mr. Drew Ligon if he would be willing to serve as our representative to the beef board. Would that be something you'd be willing to take on? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Drew. Sheila, we'll have Drew. Next, we need to appoint uh, our delegate and alternate delegate to the Missouri School Board Association. Um, I served as that last year, and um, there is a delegate meeting that is held um, in June and in November. Or the fall conference. The I fall think conference. it's actually October it this is. year, it's isn't right. it? Really but the, we'll call it the fall conference. Fall conference. So um, it's a time when um, MSB delegates from school districts um, get together and vote on important issues. And you don't need any experience to do it. I did it last year with no experience. But is there somebody that would like to serve or somebody that would wants to recommend someone to I'd serve? I'd be happy to serve. Mr. Ryan. Okay, Mr. Ryan, we'll appoint Mr. Ryan as the MSBA delegate from Bolivar, and we also need an alternate. Is there anybody who would be interested in serving as an alternate? I would. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Ms. Scott will be our alternate. Sheila. Okay, very good. Thank you. Next, we have 
uh, approval of City of Bolivar MOU regarding liberty rate increase. Yeah, we've uh, we met with the city um, and some other partners, uh, SBU as well as CMH. Um, I asked uh, Thomas to come and speak from the city, just a little bit about this opportunity to um, build a coalition in regard to some potential rate increases and some concerns that we have. And so, uh, would um, ask Thomas to kind of bring us some information about the MOU and maybe what our next steps would be. Thank you for being here. Well, good evening. Thank you for having me. Again, my name is Thomas Rilford, so I'm representing the city here on the Board of Aldermen. I'm the city administrator, and you kind of teed it up for me. So um, I think everybody that lives in town has heard that Liberty has proposed a, a rate increase to the PSC, which is the Public Service Commission, and a utility has to go to them to get permission to do an increase. Um, I think we all know that we sold the utilities to them three years ago. Um, at the time when we sold them, um, I don't think we were under the impression that impression that it, when they did do the increase that it would be at this level right so you know we're looking at significant increases um, right now the residential probably at least fifty dollars per residence um, it's going to be even higher for like the city for for the school board for you know cmh the commercial rates are even higher so you know we're concerned uh, you know not only because we're consumers but also for the citizens so um we came together. Uh, we met with, uh, you know, the school, Dr. Asbill. We met with SBU. We said, look, you know, I think it's something that we need to take a look at. So the board unanimously made a decision to intervene. And so what that means is uh, we actually filed a petition with the PSC to say, hey, look, I know you're going forward with this, but we'd like our chance to get in front of you and, and I guess I'll say fight, fight this, right, to see what, what it is. So really two concerns. One, is the level of the increase, and secondly, is their justification for making the increase. So we've done the first thing, we, we've done the intervention, but I think what's on the agenda tonight is this MOU. So we, we approved to hire a law firm, Healy Law Firm out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, they specialize in this type of thing. Uh, they have experts on staff that have experienced utilities. I think they even have some that was actually on the Missouri PSC at one time. So. That is roughly $12,000 at least to, you know, start, um, get them on retainer and start the conversation, have them look at this. So, um, you know, coming together, United Front, uh, and we, we wanted to do this not only just us with you and share that cost. And so this MOU is basically to do that, to, to, to spread that cost amongst, right now, us, the school, and SBU has decided to come on with that as well. So we're in, we're in the final stages of proving that is of that, uh, that MOU. So it's probably going to cost more down the line. That's just for them to take a look at it, you know, look at the, the information that they're going to present. But if we decide to move forward, that means they're probably going to have to hire um, expert witnesses on our behalf. So that's probably going to be more money down the line. But, um, you know, they told us that the only way you, way you can really fight them is if you actually hire a law firm, send them to represent you, and present your evidence to the Missouri Public Service Commission. So the board, and we have a representative here, Alderman Ross, um, you know, has made that decision to, to move forward for the city, and, and we're going to do our best to see what we can do, now maybe to reduce those rates, maybe to push those rates out into the future more. So that's kind of where we are. So I have a couple of questions uh, for clarification. I know we're a different rate, you know, than the residential rate, but there was initially the information that came out, and the reason I'm asking, mm -hmm. I kind of know this, but I think it's important for our patrons to know this as well. We had a rate that was established that they said, hey, you're going to be at this rate, and then, they, and then it's like, hey, we brought that to their attention, and they're like, well, we've, we've done some recalculation. Do you have a, a, a firm like this is going to be the rate or the percentage rate increase? Because when you when you get a front page headline and then you go, well, we're yeah. we're looking at it. I think it's important for our parents and our community to understand what what is that rate and have they disclosed that to you? I'm not super solid on that rate either, to be quite honest with you. Um, they said it was essentially an error on their behalf when they did the spreadsheet. Um, and if you did the math, it was still roughly what they came out with originally. I think we're saying about 130% increase. Mm -hmm. 
right? And most of that is attributed to the water, right? There yep. is a small sewer increase, but most of that is for the water. So yeah, um, and still I'm not real certain to uh, yet as what those increases are going to be on the commercial side. Either. Yeah. We've got some numbers, but until we see it in black and white, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I will tell you, based on those numbers right now, we've done the calculations. And, you know, we're, like you, we're a big consumer, right? We got the pool. In the summer, we have our splash pad. You know, it's going to go up like ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars a month for us in the summer. I mean, they're sniffing. I didn't hear it mentioned. Is CMH in this with you? They have. They um, are looking at it right now and talking with. They their, should be their, in this. I, I agree, and they've Absolutely. been in the conversations with Dr. Asbill and SBU. Yep, and we've. I've been in communication with uh, Mr. Calhoun from CMH. Has the firm had success in uh, reducing or like prolonging that? I, I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't asked them that, but this is something that they specialize in as a law firm. I know they have experience in it. Again, they said the only way you can really do anything is if you actually hire a law firm right. and actually present witnesses, question what they're doing, question the justification, and basically, you know, put up some kind of, uh, you know, legal document fight against them. Um, I have to clarify because of the MOU and our commitment, so uh, I, I plan to recommend to the board, but just for clarity, <coughs> our MOU would allow us to enter into this agreement with you and SBU and would commit uh, about $4,000 right. uh, to not exceed $4,000 worth of investment into this intervention. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Attorney. That's just the initial for the law firm to basically take a look at the package that they've submitted. And this is a long process, as you can imagine, going through the, through the Surrey Public Service Commission. Um, you know, April, uh, April 4th is our deadline to basically say, hey, look, we want to we wanna intervene. But if, even if this does take effect, we're looking at February of next year. So it's a, it's a long, lengthy process. Any other questions? I'm, I'm just going to ask this, <clears throat> but we're not looking at getting a carve out for the city of Bolivar, the, the you know, like uh, SBU and, and the uh, uh, Bolivar One School System. I, I'm assuming that we're talking about trying to get a general rate increase that would affect everybody in Bolivar. We are representing right. our, our stakeholders as students and parents, and then the, uh, the coalition with the city represents every homeowner, and then SBU obviously is a is a driver in the community, and so we we want those now. With those, so while we I don't make any decision for CMH, while we would hope that they would join, the effort for the city, the school, and SBU was we we had less than four or five days to meet build the coalition and enter the intervention. So we were trying to act in the best interest of a lot of people on their behalf. And so that and we had the capacity to do that. Yeah, that's right. Any other questions? Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, at this time, I would like to recommend that we approve the MOU and enter into the agreement with the city of Bolivar for this partnership. So moved. Mr. Womack. Do second. we have a second by Dr. Goodman? Any further discussion? I just want to commend the city and the school and SBU for speaking on behalf of so many people who are going to be impacted by this. And little voices aren't heard, but big voices can be heard. So I, I think it's wonderful Great that point. you guys were able to put this together yep. in such a limited time. So yes. thank you to the, to the city and thank you for reaching out. Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Right. Thank you. Next, we have a consideration of approval of bank services bids. So we will be taking uh, bid proposals for uh, bank services. Uh, uh, with your approval, we would recommend uh, you're making a motion so that we can send those out. And then Chelsea and I will begin that review process just to, just as soon as we can. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Mike Ryan makes a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Ms. Hubbard seconds. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. 
Thank you. Finally, we have uh, consideration for the approval of our summer school application, which essentially is kind of a formality, I think, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wall, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So moved. Mr. Ryan has made the motion. Second. Second by Dr. Goodman. Any further discussion? Dates of summer school. Dates of summer school. It's the Wednesday after Memorial Day. Wednesday after Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. For 20 days. 20 school days. <laughs> yeah. Ben, what is the last date? You got it? 29th? It is the 25th. The 29th is on Sunday. From May 29th to June 25th. The memorial, all right, would it be the 26th of June, which would be the Wednesday, or is it the Tuesday? No, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, okay, the 25th through 23rd? Wait, what? Oh. Nope, you, you're in July. <laughs> oh, I'm in July. That's going to cause a problem. May 28th? Yeah, if which would Wednesday. be the 29th. Okay. There it is. Thank you, Braden. Thank you, Braden. Dun, dun, May 29th through June, June 25th. 25th. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we do not have any public comment this evening so at this time we need a motion to adjourn so moved. dr goodman with the motion and we'll have mike ryan second all in favor uh -huh. and we are adjourned thank you